happy Monday. I'm hoping the technology powers that be are going to just let my live stream be okay today. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the live chat over here. If you're watching this on the replay, we go live 1 p.m. every Monday and we talk about um, a lot of eBay, but also we're just talking about e-commerce practices in general and things to make your selling life better. So there is a live chat going on now, but if you're watching this in the replay, there isn't. You just got to leave comments for me down below, which I always appreciate. And for everyone, when you comment on any of my videos, I read every single comment myself. I can't always respond to everything. In fact, I can respond to less and less as the more comments come in. But I do try to let you know that I saw it with a little heart and, and answer what I can. <clears throat> to get a little more access to me, you can come over to the niche to profit facebook group where i am actively in there every day and i've got some amazing moderators that are in there and helping answer your questions solve your problems and make your selling life so much better and uh yeah it has been it has been a rough weekend it's been a rough may anybody else just had a really rough may i think it's just like it's trying to just slap us around just as it's going out you know and welcoming in summer but it is just whoo it's been a tough one i am really really happy to have some chapters closed um some things have gotten wrapped up and um not happy to have lost my doggy but um but again, you know, I'm one to always see the good in everything. And, and I realized how much time um, she was taking for her special needs and that she was really, really, really uh, needy in those last few weeks, um, needing just a lot of extra care, you know, having to do a lot of extra carpet scrubbing and, and all that stuff. And so... I have spent, I don't have much makeup on today because my eyes are still <laughs> like puffy and swollen because I, I have cried a lot this weekend, but I think I've, I've, you know, I'm kind of, I'm on the other side of it, you know, working through the grief and, and, um, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And then I don't, I didn't have my kids. My kids went to their dads on Saturday. So I've spent the weekend alone, which has been like really odd. So I've been trying to do some house cleaning go figure and um i made a really stupid mistake this morning really stupid okay so i went to go clean the well not to clean them yet but to put the toilet bowl cleaner in all the toilets right i'm like mm, i'm getting that all done i squirted that sucker right i didn't lift both seats up you know and i squirted it through the crack like right onto the top of my foot all over the floor so I had to clean that up. <laughs> so it's like, oh my gosh, it's just been one of those months. <laughs> oh, thank you, everyone. All all of the the comments and the prayers and the well wishes and the, all of that has just meant so much. I really do appreciate it. Really do appreciate it. Uh, so good to see you all here. I saw another... <laughs> Another big YouTube name went live at the exact same time I did. So I suspect that is where a lot of people are right now. And we're going to get some barking dogs because the trash truck's coming. I swear they time it this way. But it is what it is, right? Whew. So I do want to get to some very, very overdue fan mail today. And then we are going to dig in. I got... I got some cool stuff to show you that is going to help you with your eBay research and maybe cause you to look at another channel or two and to solve any issues you may be having with eBay shipping glitches. So I promise you we're going to get to all of that. Uh, but first, I do want to open some family. Now, I did pre-open boxes so that I'm not spending time doing that. 
So that part's already been done. Um, but I want to show you some of these goodies. This is from, this just says it's from a great customer of Packages Plus. So I don't, oh, Lorraine, it's from Lorraine. Okay, they did put a note that says it's from Lorraine. I really, really, really love when you guys, when you guys give me a note so I know who things are from because I have some things I don't know who they're from. Um, and I look sometimes on the labels, it doesn't say. But um, Lorraine Lowry, this is absolutely incredible. And I should have shown this the last time I was um, doing openings. But look at this, you guys. Look at this quilt. It has turtles all over it. It's all turtles. It is absolutely amazing and I love I love this color too and this shows me that as far as on my screen this is not coming up with the true color this is a turquoise blue and it's not showing turquoise blue why is that how do I get it to show the right color I thought I had the right light bulb now um I love this Lorraine thank you thank you so much uh, this will probably go on our little reading chair in the living room and and it will be um, used and cherished thank you thank you she also included a piece of art I'm sure for Rachel uh, of a horsey so Rachel's really gonna love that Rachel's not here I would have her be opening some of the things that are addressed to her so we'll do that so one of the one of the packages I got it doesn't say who it's from. It's from 76039. And I forgot to look up where that is. 76039 zip code. Oh, did it show turquoise on your end? Oh, well, that's good. Maybe it's just my monitor isn't showing the right color. So 76039 is on the label, but I don't know who it's from. So somebody could look that up for me. I would appreciate it. But in this box are a bunch of goodies that I did already take out of the bubble wrap just to save some time. Um, we've got a little vintage, um, is there a paper in that? Ooh, looks like there's a little paper down in that. I don't know how I'd get it out. But it's got the, um, the little spaghetti kind of stuff going on. Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. so. If you sent this, please let me know. Um, so we've got this, it, because sometimes you guys send me things to resale. And I definitely want to acknowledge and put all of those proceeds into the Niche Foundation. So, and we got this is a little vase. So we probably will be selling those. I'm assuming those were sent for me to sell. Got this beautiful piece of milk glass. I love this piece of milk glass. And I'm not a big milk glass fan, but I really like this piece. Look at the look at the detail on the on the little uh, foot there. It's like little roses. It's like tree roses is what I would call it. I didn't look to see is it no, nope, there's no mark on the bottom, but that is a beautiful, beautiful piece. So Put that on the shelf so it doesn't get broken. There are some really nice doilies. I'm a big doily fan. Um, I use these all over my house. I use doilies, and I'm teaching my children about using doilies because why scratch your nice wood furniture when you have a beautiful doily you can use? So I will probably use these because I love them, if that's okay. All right, and I think, okay, that that was all that was in that box. So whoever that was, thank you. If you could let me know who you were that sent that, I would love to thank you more. What's the word? Not in person, but. <laughs> okay, this is from Cindy Brenner, Cindy B. And it looks like it is something for Rachel, which I'm sure Rachel will not mind if I open it up and show you. Rachel loves the gifts, by the way. And I tell her, 
you know, she's very, very camera shy, but I tell her, I said, you know, you, you want to be on camera so people get to know you because then they know what to send you. <laughs> Whoa. So there's this beautiful little bird trinket box. Absolutely gorgeous. And inside we have a little micro mosaic pin. I love micro mosaics. Look at that. That is awesome. 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 I'm going to put that right back in the little box, put him up here. And then there's a box with a horse on it. Box with a horse on it. She is going to dig that box. I can assure you. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is awesome. Do you know, she makes either tea or hot chocolate almost every night. And she uses a mug. And I bet this is going to be her new favorite mug. That is amazing. And look, it's got the little horse down inside of it. Oh, thank you. She is going to adore this. Absolutely going to adore it. How come I can't get it back in me? Am I just that inept? I can't get it back in the box, right? I'm so bad at these things. I don't even know how. How does it not fit back in the box? What is wrong with me? Okay. <laughs> so thank you, Cindy. I don't know if Cindy's here, but thank you, thank you, thank you, Cindy. Rachel is going to super duper love that. Can't even tell you how much she's going to love that. And Brie, Brie had sent her a... Um, a mask with a horse on it. And I swear I can hardly get that thing away from her to wash it. She wants to wear it all the time. Um, Julia Hardy says, I have a ton of my late mother-in-law's costume jewelry and decided to send some for you to use in your live sales. Just a token to thank you for all you do for us resellers. Julia, thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see. Get a little unboxing surprise here. We've got some necklaces with rhinestones. Those are really nice. I like those. We'll have to, they got a little tangled. We'll untangle them. And rubber bands. Do you know how much I need rubber bands? <laughs> oh, look at that. That's, that's very pretty. It's a cross with rhinestones. It's a necklace. And then there's another one. Oh, that's very pretty too. Look at that. We could probably put these in this week's sale. That one, oh, I thought it was a pin pendant. It's not. So we probably can get these into this week's sale. I've just started to put together the stuff that's going to be in the sale. Oh, you love seeing her wear it in the... And then we've got some of these um, these things. <laughs> I don't know what she, I don't know what the technical name for it is. They're necklaces. I know that. Oh, look at that! Genuine crystal investments, but it is a vintage brooch in its original box. That is very nice. That is very nice. And if you've never been to one of my live sales. Uh, the way it works is I put lots together and everything starts at $1. Everything starts at $1. Chokers. Okay. And we do it auction style. Thank you, Susan. Woo. You know, it's, it's really funny. Um, Zena, my Rottweiler, and I'll just keep, keep unboxing the jewelry as I talk. We got a seed bead necklace. Um, it, I got a Facebook memory Friday morning at, that it had been, this is J.L. Alden Camp, that it had been eight years to the day since we rescued her. And her story is that her owner uh, was a very abusive person who ended up going to prison and his grandparents ended up 
taking the dog and she was a little out of control. Um, they guess she was three to four years old when we got her. She needed a lot of training. But I had a neighbor at the time who trained Rottweilers and she was the one who encouraged me to get her because her temperament was so good. So uh, we did and um, we put a lot of work into that girl and she was amazing with the kids. Her temperament was absolutely fantastic. And um, we had her for eight years now. The funny thing is when I went through my divorce, I kind of had to, to fight to keep Xena. Um, my ex wanted her and I was like, uh-uh, she's staying with me. So we've been through a lot <laughs> in the last few years. And I was felt like even in, even though she was like senior and kind of falling apart, you know, she was still my protector. Like she would have given her all to take care of me and the kids. Like Rachel was her puppy. She'd sit there and just lick and clean Rachel's feet for hours <laughs> if I let her. Yeah. Oh, it just got a little elephant on it. Look at it's got a little little wood elephant. We did feet and necklace. This is some great stuff. Thank you so much, Julia. Crafting odds and ends. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a crafter lot. Pretty sure we'll have a crafter lot this week. I think I have enough. I'd like to get a nice juicy crafter lot together for you guys. Nice beaded necklaces. Kind of that 90s chunky gold tone. I love that it's all in baggies. Oh, it's an Angel Charms keychain. I'm not taking everything out of the bag just to, you know, save time. But when I do the sale, you guys will see it all piece by piece. Much clearer. This is just amazing. These donations are just absolutely amazing. I, I was just having to pay. These are all pins. These are all pins. I was just having to pay the attorney for the nonprofit. I uh, just got a bill for another $2,000. So I swear the attorneys are like the ones who make out in all this stuff. This was supposed to be a discounted rate, you know, a nonprofit rate. This is an absolutely gorgeous ring set. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh, and there's another ring. Oh, no, this is. Oh, look at that. It's a bracelet. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing, Julia. This is awesome. Thank you so much. And then some more necklaces. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll get this. We'll get this into Friday's sale. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. That is awesome. And I want you guys to know, it's like, I love when you put the notes in there because I keep all these notes in a little scrapbook. All the notes mean a lot to me. So I, I do hold on to all of those notes. All right. That is awesome. Okay. This one. Um, oh, um. I'm not going to read all of this. Marion Matrazo sent Rachel some little frames to paint. So Rachel is going to get those painted up. And I'm going to get that girl to get her Etsy store open. That's coming very soon. So art supplies for Rachel, you guys, are just absolutely golden. Can't even tell you how much they mean to her when her eyes light up when she gets art supplies. So, thank you for that. <laughs> so this is from D. Oh, Deke Fuller. D. Uh, most stressful get ship done ever. <laughs> Let me know how they arrive. Have Rachel Google and tube Aaron go bra little horse that could oh I know what these are so number one your your packaging of this 
is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And these are all, oh my gosh, I'm not, I am not going to unwrap all of these, you guys. I am going to save these for Rachel to unwrap. It is a whole bunch of Briar's horses. She is going to flip out. The girl is going to flip out. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap that back up. She comes home today and, um, oh my gosh, she is going to be beside herself. There's one, two, there's three Briar's horses in here. And yes, your packaging was absolutely perfect. So that is something I am going to let Rachel open up. And uh, let's see, this is from Sherry. Um, Sherry, uh, I won't read the whole card, but she's noticed that I buy yarn for my mom. And she sent a whole box of yarn for me to give to my mom. And you can be sure that I will absolutely get that to my mom. And she will be very, very thankful for that as well. Well, you missed my Let's Get Shipped Done videos. Well, let, let me, I got some announcements. As soon as I get through this mail, then you just stay tuned. And uh, I've got some announcements. Okay. This one, I got this big note that says, read. <laughs> read. Okay. Well. Um... Hey there, Danny and Rachel. I packed a few things from my collection of treasures I thought you might like. Feel free to keep or resale if you like. That is totally fine. Love your videos, and I have learned a lot um, from them as well. From Susan Ewing. Is Susan in the chat? Now, this one, I just picked this up this morning. So, oh, look at him. You know, we're bird crazy around here. I, I literally have to go to the feed store and go find myself 50 pound bags of bird seed now because the the smaller bags don't last. I'm, I have to fill the bird feeders now every two days. Every two days, they just we have we have three like regular bird seed feeders up, and then we have the the little I don't know what they're called the little black seeds that are like for the finches and the in the mesh. And that one lasts a little longer because the big birds can't get to it. But we're still filling that one up at least once a week. Oh, my gosh. I love these. I love these so much. <laughs> look at these little guys. They're little heads, Bob. Oh, wow. Look at those. Ah, I love those. These are going up here. These are going right up here. Here, little buddies. You just, you just camp out right there. Yes, that red bird is so cool. Hey, Jamie. Oh, and then we've got this really cool, it's like a Native American fetish bear. And it's wood. What does it say? It says, ah, uh, it's Native American. I know that. It's that. Dine, Dina, Dine, I don't know how you say it, but there you go. It is signed. This is a very cool piece. Very cool piece. And this will go, this will go in a live sale. I know that one was intended for live sale for sure. That's a very cool piece. I love it. We don't have the squirrels. I wish we had squirrels. Bad. I'd have all the little critters come. We're thinking about putting in a pond. If I can get my landlord to, okay, I'll give you a landlord update for those who've been following the saga of this house. Um, we're still working on getting the soundproofing. This is awesome. That actually looks like Rachel. Oh my gosh, I love that. That that's her with the horses right there. Like oh, that gives me chills. Um, so the air conditioner works. It's just super, super loud. And it's right over Noah's room. So we have been turning it off at night so he can sleep. Well, the problem with that is we're about to hit the not just 100 degree, but above 100 degrees here in Vegas. So that's not really going to be an option for much longer. And um, 
the landlord keeps going back and forth about the company that's supposed to do it and yada de yada de and they have to order the part and yada de yada de. This has been going on literally for two months. So I gave her a proposition and we have another mug and I can tell you this one will get used as well. Rachel will use these mugs for her tea and her coffee because she she drinks um, what we call sleepy tea at night. Let's see if I can put you. So to help her sleep because she's having trouble falling asleep. Was that everything? I think it is. Did I get it all? I think I did. Okay. If you sent something and I have missed it, I will tell you, I have had some packages go missing from things that I bought from other live sales. So check tracking and see if it's arrived. And if not, we'll have to give it a nudge. Yeah, so um, I talked to some companies about fixing this issue and it's like a $200 fix. So I told the landlord, I said, look, if I pay for it, um, I, I said, I want to make this deal. I'll pay for it if you will extend my lease another year. And I'm still waiting for an answer on that. So the, the landlord's daughter says she has to talk to her mom who actually owns the house. And I'm kind of like, so I'm sitting here like waiting on pins and needles because to me, if she doesn't say yes, does that mean she's meaning to kick me out of here in six months, which is a very stressful proposition. I don't want to move again <laughs> in just six months, um, but it's something that I might have to be prepared for. So, so that's where we stand right now. And I have been working so hard in the backyard. I mean, we've planted pumpkins and I've planted all kinds of flowers and, and bushes and I pruned back these horrendous grapevines that were all dead. And, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm putting a lot of blood, sweat into literally blood, sweat and tears. Cause like my thumbs from pulling those uh, grapevines are all chewed up, but yeah, it's a really stressful. And I would just like to know that at least I can stay here another year and not worry. Cause I think in another year, I will have enough for a down payment and can go buy something and I will have resolved another chapter of my life, which is, you know, to, to finally put to rest the old business I had that, that closed down and just some stuff that's followed me around from that. Um, so I need another year. I just need another year and uh, I'll be on top of my game. So there we go. Okay. So thank you everyone for, for, I, I, I am so bad about just accepting gifts. I, I never learned to just accept things. And so this is really um, an awesome growing learning experience for me to just humbly <laughs> say thank you and, um, and just take that in. Uh, it's, 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 it's something that feels very awkward. I've always my whole life felt like, I have to reciprocate with, with something, you know, get a card, give a card kind of thing. And um, so I just, I really, really appreciate, it. especially the love for Rachel, you know, a lot of, you know, she's, <laughs> she's been through one heck of a, a, a last six months too, but we've got, you know, new chapters starting and June is going to be a very exciting month. Um, so a lot of you have been asking for more of the educational videos, you more of the, the nuts and bolts of selling and all of that. So stay tuned. I will be able to announce more next Monday, but um, I have been working on putting a lot more of that together for you guys. So definitely because it, it has to be on top of my regular thrifting videos for, for my YouTube algorithm to stay functioning correctly and for me not to lose my income that I've grown um, from just the ads on YouTube. So in order to do that, it's got to be extra videos. So it's coming soon. All right. I have something I think you guys will really like today. Um, research is a big, big topic always. How do I look something up? And in the, the the Niche to Profit Facebook group, we get a lot of questions. And often I see everybody kind of turning to just doing an image search. Oh, 
how many kids do I have? I have, I have a 30, she 35 or 36 now, something like that. She's 35 or 36. I have that daughter. That daughter has five kids. And then I have Jordan who is 29. And then I kind of hit the reset button and Noah is 16 and Rachel is 14. So I have that big gap in between, uh, but I have four all together. I have four all together. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the item specifics, but first I want to, I always like to start with something very positive and I think will make your life better. So if you're using a Google image search, be sure that you're just using that to get a groundwork of possibly what to call something to go search further. Don't stop at just the results from a Google image search because the image search technology is not anywhere close to being perfected. And there are so many results you will never see. So for instance, the question over in the group this morning was on a, and of course I picked something that I don't know how to pronounce. It's spelled Gerold Horzelan, G-E-R-O-L-D, and then P-O-R-Z-E-L-L-A-N, which I'm sure is, is another language for porcelain. So Google Images came back with a something similar that was listed for 25 bucks. This person did decide to seek a little further guidance. They went right to the Gerald Porcelain website and fortunately got an answer. Many times you won't get an answer that way. You are, or they found them on Facebook, I think is what it was. Many times you won't get an answer directly from a company on that. That was pretty lucky that she did and found out that it's like a 1940s item, fairly rare. But I went over and did a search on eBay for Gerald Porcelain and it was a bird. And right there, it told me it was not a $25 item. I mean, I didn't find the exact one, but I could tell that this was an $80 to $100 item. And that is the skill I want you guys to develop is you may not find the exact one. You may not know exactly what its value is, but you can get a range. And that's why even on my videos, on my recaps, I'm not just giving a price. I'm given a range of where I expect that item to sell. And I put those numbers there, not just, I'm not just pulling those out of my head. I research every item that I tell you about before I put that value there. It isn't, those numbers are not just grabbed out of the air. That's off actual sold results. So now sometimes eBay doesn't have the item. And I always tell you that is an absolutely fantastic thing. I want to have the only one. I want something rare. So in those cases, you need to dig a little deeper and look at the maker, look at um, similar like comps from maybe not even that exact maker, but a maker of the same caliber. I mean, it's tough. I've got a piece right now. You move you so we don't break things. I've got a piece right now that I am researching. It's this. You may have seen me buy it at the swap meet. And I know that um, the, well, it's not the original owner. It's someone who purchased it in the year 2000, paid $180 for it from an antique store. And they wrote down Dutch arts and crafts vase. 1905 arts and crafts. That's, that's all that's on the receipt. So that was my starting point at least. Um, but even in, in all of my searching so far, I have not, and I suspect I won't find this exact piece. So what I have to do is I have to look at the style, the glaze, the bottom, kind of some of the elements of it and determine that this is the quality of some other well-known manufacturers, manufacturers, manufacturers isn't the right word, uh, creators of these pieces from that time period. I mean, yes, it is arts and crafts. I mean, I can, I can verify that it is arts and crafts and all that. So then I have to determine a price to list it 
based on what I know and just make sure that I put keywords in there that a high end collector is going to be able to find the item, even if I don't specifically know who done it. So exactly. Arts and crafts era Dutch pottery pitcher are my most important words. And I will price it. I might put that one at auction. I don't know yet. Or I might just price it high. Stay tuned for that. Um, but I, when I bought it, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt it was worth the $60 that I paid for it. I knew that. And it had the potential to be worth, has the potential to be worth so much more. Because uh, pieces like this generally don't go down in value over the years. There's some things, some glass that has gone down in value. This art pottery stuff has not gone down in value. So if somebody paid $180 for it 21 years ago, I'm pretty sure it's still worth $180 minimum. So, so, and then that's just how I make those decisions. And that's how I want you to make those decisions is just develop that inner gut instinct about, I don't know what it is, but I know it's good. And I know it's worth buying at, x dollars and a lot of times you know if you pay up a little bit it may not be the profit margin that you'd hoped for but the education that you'll get in researching some of these higher end items will pay for itself over time i can assure you i can assure you Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Google Lens and Google Image Search and even eBay Image Search. I'm just not a fan when it comes to the the antiques and collectibles. Just because the technology is still in its infanthood. It is still learning. And most, most images of this stuff were not taken on a white background which is one of the critical factors for this stuff being found. That's why I encourage you when you're listing, make sure you're using a white background because that is what Google picks up. So, all right, so there's that. So now the other place on the higher end items that I'm gonna highly, highly recommend that you, stand by, I meant to set this up before I got going here, that you use is, cherish.com you guys I talk about it all the time this is the home page of cherish.com this is a site that caters to people either with money or are spending other people's money that's important people who are spending other people's money are not emotionally attached to that money and they just want what they want and they've got their budget now Something you may not know about Cherish that I'm going to show you right now is if you go down all the way to the bottom, ba -ba -bum, see right here, pink book pricing guide, bam. These are going to be your completed sales on Cherish. So uh, somebody throw me something you want me to look up over here. Throw me something, throw me something, anything. Cherish is amazing. Cherish is a, it, it, the things that they accept, not everything that's accepted, but the things they accept, you can get much more money for on Cherish than you can on eBay or Etsy or any other site. So somebody give me something that I need to look up. Mm, Got to be more specific. Japanese art what? A Japanese art, uh, a painting or a, a DeGrazia print. Hey, let's look up a DeGrazia print. I like that. Okay, so let's look up the Grazia print. Boop. And so it's going to first show me shops. That's interesting. That's new. It never used to do that. Why are you showing me this? Hmm. Why is it when you go to show somebody the way something works, it works completely different? than the last time you used it. De Grazia print. I don't know why that did that. Let's see, because that's not normally what comes up. This is not normally what comes up. 
I will just tell you that right now. Uh, maybe because it's, maybe a print is different. That's why I'm live. You know, you can see this stuff. Um, okay, let me just look up my little pottery piece. Because this is what I normally see. See, it just gives you results. I don't know why that showed up that crazy like that. Okay, but so I put in arts and crafts uh, pottery. Now, it is probably thinking handcrafted in some of that. So that's why I didn't want to use this example. But it, it, it shows you the format. And you can't sort highest to lowest, which I wish you could. Uh, but you can search through and you're always going to find incredible images to compare to. And you can find something that looks like the one that you have. Like this is literally an arts and crafts pottery vase that probably sold too cheap. But this is a good resource. It's not the be all end all. But using Cherish Price Guide, let's look up a Murano glass bowl. How about that? There we go. I don't know why some of them don't have the sold price. Uh, that always interests me. But look, this would not go for $99 on eBay. It would go for about $50 to $60. Same with this one. But look at the prices that you get on Cherish. And I can verify. I, I've sold almost all of the Murano glass I've sold has been on Cherish because of those prices. You can get those prices. So just remember to check out Cherish and do a little digging in there for some of the values you can get because at the end of the day on these used items the value is literally what someone is willing to pay for it that's it you can look over the course of the history of this item being sold such as on worth point and all of that but it really doesn't matter what it sold for in 2016 or 2018 or even 2020 what matters is what are the comps showing now? And that's why I tell you guys, don't follow what a whole bunch of sellers might be doing if you know something has more value because those will sell off, right? As going, you go forward, more sellers come in, they see your higher price listing, they go, oh, this is worth this much. They start listing in that range. Now you have a trend of this item being in this range and it's going to start selling in that range. So it's all about supply, demand, what's out there. And it, sometimes you have to hold on to this stuff a little bit longer to get those really good prices. Um, but it's, that's like, there are no exacts in this business. It is kind of a learning to flex and go and grow and being patient sometimes. And now if you've got commodity items, you got to go, you got to go with the trends because something may be hot right now and it'll be a dud, you know, six months from now and you can't sell it at all. Generally, the collectibles market always comes back around and stuff sells. Like right now, we're starting to see a trend in milk glass coming back. Milk glass, you could not give milk glass away two, three, four years ago. But the millennials like milk glass. So now milk glass is trending up. There's a demand. And so don't go with any like, oh, that, well, there's like three sellers over there selling this for $10. I guess I have to sell it for $10. If in your gut, you know, it's worth 25 or 30 listed at the 25 or 30, you will be surprised how many buyers out there would rather have the 25 to $30 item because they know the value is there and they're concerned that those lower priced ones mm, may not get to them in one piece or it's not going to be what they say it is. So that is, that is the interesting thing about this market and there. And, and there's, you know, I give values at the end of every one of my videos and that's really just based on looking at my kids are home looking at what's happened over the last 90 days what else is out there i do look at what else is out there and available how much of it is out there to determine that there's only one or two i just price it up I price it up and that has worked for me very very well for a long long time 
Okay, it's going to get a little loud because the kids just got home. Even though I said, don't drop them off before two o'clock. <laughs> so, did that help? Any questions on that? Farmhouse is going bye bye. No way. Not with. Oh, it's moving or it's. It's good or it's not so good. Because I think farmhouse is hot right now because cottage core is like a thing, a big thing right now. All right. Hello. That is Rachel walking into her room. Um, yes. Yeah, so now the other thing I do want to touch on before we finish up this day eBay glitches, eBay frustrations, eBay being wacky. Okay, can we make dogs be quiet? Thank you. <laughs> Peanut just like goes through the moon when her kids come home. Like she cannot contain herself. She loves her kids. Rename it all cottage core. There you go. People are moving away from it. I don't know. Maybe it's the term farmhouse. Maybe we got to call it something else. Country cottage. Country cottage. You can start trends too. You know that? You can start trends. I mean, I would say Yvonne, Yvonne Thrifty Rich has made the smiley face super cool again. Think about the thousands of people that watch her videos and they start looking for smiley face stuff. We're all more aware of smiley face stuff. That is how trends start, you guys. It like It's a wave and it just poo, it ripples out. We can make stuff cool. Oh, I did say I was going to talk about the sugared fruit. I did say I was going to talk about the sugared fruit. Okay. I have been, uh, I just love the fake food. I don't know why, but it's always been a really good seller for me. Hold on. I'm pulling up a search here. Fake fruit has always been a good seller for me. It got a little tough with, Kind of the Chinese market import stuff being readily available, but the vintage stuff, the vintage stuff will sell. People are decorating with it again. Now the sugared fruit, I'm trying to find. Uh, he wants to pull up everything. I'll show my screen in a second, guys. Okay. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with sugared fruit. Now it's not going to make you rich. Okay. Sugared fruit. It's not going to make you rich, <laughs> but it's a steady seller. Look at here. And it's a bigger seller around Christmas time. You know, a lot of it comes in ornaments, uh, but it's a very steady seller. You can sell the sugar frosted fruit. And the thing is you can find it super cheap. So everybody goes, does that stuff really sell? Yeah, it really does. It really does. Look at that. People want it. They want it. It's good decorating stuff. Oh, I would, I would love those strawberries. And again, here we go. We're getting down, you know, where there's, well, not so much, some cheaper ones. But if we go look at active, I had to put the fake up here just to not get a thousand results. <laughs> but you can see, look at, it's all priced really good. Pick up the sugared fruit and keep the trend high. There you go. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, there's certain things. I know. Who knew? There's certain things. Oh, Yvonne's here. Hey, Yvonne. Um, there are certain things that will just trend as people are consuming content on different channels and Facebook groups. They see somebody do a DIY with something, then somebody else does it, and you got it TikTok in, and boom, all of a sudden, you've got a trend. So kind of just stay up with that stuff. <laughs> Um, okay, so the last thing I wanted to work on is eBay's glitching. It is, I tried to list for the first time. Yes, I'm ready to list again for the first time in six months. I was so excited to get my drafts complete. I took my pictures. I came over here and I got the spin, 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 <laughs> spin. I could not get anything to list. It was very frustrating. So I walked away. Now, there isn't a whole lot we can do with that. Uh, eBay's got to figure that out. And I think there's enough of us in contact with the powers that be letting them know that we've got like a pretty big issue going on. You just got to, you got to ride it out and be patient.
continue to create your drafts, but this is also where being multi-channel keeps you going and getting sales and you can keep listings going up. I highly, highly recommend list perfectly for that because you can create your listing and list perfectly, send it out to the other channels. And when eBay gets it back together, boom, send it to eBay. All is right with the world. Um, I, I'm just, a, I'm a big, big fan of using list perfectly. In fact, vintage and Vino will tell you how well this perfectly has worked for them lately. We had a post over in the group, her little back seat was all full of packages going out that a lot of them were because she's using list perfectly to list on other channels. So we have to put up with that headache with, with eBay. If you can get to where your listings are showing, there's another glitch that is in shipping. So uh, there's some weird glitchy stuff going on where eBay is showing uh, different choices for, um, for mail than you had in your listing and not letting you pick the, the right choice and all of that. Here's a way to get through that. That is use our little friends, pirateship.com. This is what the pirate ship rate sheet looks like basically this is how easy it is you pick what kind of packaging I'm, I'm on the right I don't want to show you my ship part because I've got customer information in there but you can see you can import your eBay listing your eBay sales right into pirate ship and it will notify eBay and those customers of the tracking and everything just as if you had shipped it off of eBay itself. So that is your way to fix that problem. It also is a way to get your, your rate quotes and all that. And the other thing that I have found with using pirate ship. So on eBay, you can add insurance to items and it's a little bit on the pricey side and it's a little sketchy and getting things covered on pirate ship. They use I forget what the company is they use, but it's phenomenal, right? It's like it's like 75 cents for a hundred dollars of insurance, which is nothing. If you've got a hundred dollar item, 75 cents is nothing. And much, much easier to get a claim paid. And pirate ship, I, I can't even say enough good things. So the other thing is you know how USPS sometimes adjusts and says, oh, well, this package was really, you know, five ounces heavier than you said, so we're charging you. Do you know that if you tell Pirate Ship, uh-uh-uh, I weighed that, I know it was correct, whatever, Pirate Ship will refund you that money and they will fight the post office. I was like, okay, you get my business, I'm in love. <laughs> and those of you who like to use uh, like points on a credit card, or in my case, I use my PayPal debit card. It's a debit MasterCard so that I still get a percentage back when I use it. I use that to pay for the postage, then I get a little bit back. So if you're good with managing your credit cards that way, and you're not just like going to pay interest on the balance, use a credit card where you get points and let that work for you too through Pirate Ship. So that can solve. The entire shipping glitch problem right there. Just use pirate ship. Just use pirate ship. You use something called Shippo. Okay. Oh, because you're in Canada. So there you go. There you go. And the priority mail uh, covered amount is $100 on pirate ship. $50 on eBay. So there's that too. That too. So if you're using pirate ship, where do you drop the packages off? Wherever you would normally, I mean, you're just printing your label with pirate ship. Um, you can schedule a pickup or you can go drop off your packages. It's USPS mail. It's just a service that creates the labels for you. Yep. 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 We got five minutes left, you guys. So I just want to open it up. Any questions on um, any of that? I'm, the biggest thing I want to say about these glitches and things is just stay positive. Just stay positive. Don't, don't feed your brain frustration. Like, yes. Is it frustrating? Yeah, I was, I was not happy last night. And then I just like, you know what? 
there is nothing I can do about this right now. I'm going to step away and I'm going to go water my plants or whatever it is. Don't get yourself too worked up. Find something else to do with that time. Historically, over the course of the last two plus decades that I have been on eBay, every glitch has always worked itself out. Oh, item specifics. I am still waiting to get an answer on the indexing. Is the indexing done? Uh, can we assume now that we have to just go in and change those? So I am still waiting for an answer on that. It does not seem to be that they are going to replace those item specifics as we were told, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but again, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Your, your option is build up your business on another platform. Truly, that's it. Or try to work with eBay and keep going, but that's it. The Rolo, oh, the Rolo is life changing. It's life changing. Uh, it's just the time element. I, it's literally, boom, push a button. I've got a label, slap it right on the package versus, you know, um, plain paper printers where you have to sometimes cut it and tape it. Not, uh -uh. Rolo is like, oh, I love it. My packages get packaged out in my garage. I don't even bring them in the house. I've got a sheet. I write down the weights. I come in. I print all my labels. Boom, boom, boom. Go out and slap them on the packages because I've just got this little stack of labels. Yeah, you don't have to buy ink. No ink. The labels are super cheap. It's like $20 for a 1,000 labels. Yeah. It is about $180. Yep. But it, it will pay for itself. It will, if you're doing any amount of shipping, the Rolo will pay for itself. Yeah. It's a, it's a, um, thermal printer, thermal printer. So there's no ink. There's no ink. Oh, this, my, well, Jordan, had this made for me. Now YouTube sends this out when you reach 100,000 subscribers, they send out a plaque. So Jordan coordinated with the kids um, for Mother's Day. This was my gift when I reached my, my 20,000 subscribers, she had this made for me. So she, uh, she stealth mode had that, had that done. That was my Mother's Day gift. Yeah, the no ink will pay for it. Yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh. I, I hate that I still have an ink printer for my invoices. I got to switch to a laser printer. Yeah. No, I have awesome kids. I have, I have awesome kids. I know. I know. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we can continue the conversation over on the Facebook group. Come join us over there. It's Niche to Profit on eBay, Etsy, and more where we just, we have listing challenges, we answer questions, we help ID stuff, all that good stuff. Um, and over here, like, I wish StreamYard would show me, you know, who all's here that's my moderators, but I can tell you that many of my moderators have their own channels, and it would be totally awesome if you would go support them. In fact, I think Julia might have had to run and go get set up for her sale, but uh, Julia of Perfecting Pearls is having a live sale right after my life. So head on over to her channel and check that out. She has, I saw, I saw her Instagram post. She's got some really cute stuff, really cute stuff. Yes, Vintage and Vino, for the amount of shipping I saw you do, you totally need to. And um, if anybody's going to get one, I don't... <laughs> I don't have a discount code for you, but I super appreciate if you will use the link that I provi provide as they do throw me a bone, you know, for, for mentioning them. But that is not why I mention them. I use it myself. I love it. Anything I tell you about, even if I am an affiliate, it's because I believe in the product. So it's perfecting pearls, perfecting pearls. Maybe Melissa can put a link real quick before we sign off for it. Hi, Deborah. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Your support just means the world to me. Uh, it just, 
this has been a crazy, crazy year and we're going into some changing different times and having this community uh, means everything to me. So thank you. I'm at your service. Let me know what you need in the way of information and help with your business and let's grow these businesses together. And most of all, let's go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks everyone.